I'm going to reach out to these coaches, reach out to these pals of mine. Uh, and just, like I say, it's, it's exciting. And so just a quick update. Eddie Hall has reached out. He's requested my friggin' cookbook. And boy, is he going to need it. Coach Greg, and as you know, Eddie Hall's training for his first bodybuilding competition. And in today's video, we're going to go over his training and his dietary suggestions and see, does he know what he's doing? And spoiler alert, Eddie Hall realizes he does not know a lot about bodybuilding. And so he's not going about this alone. He's going to reach out to other people who can help him. And I've told him, come ask me anything. He wrote me in private, said, please go easy on me, Coach Greg. And I said, well, obviously I'm going harder than last time. And so in today's video, we're critiquing his training, his dietary recommendations in order to help not only Eddie Hall, but all of you watching right now. Should just some just light squats. We haven't done squats for ages. As I say, training's been very minimal. And so he hasn't squatted in about three weeks. And so he's going to go easy and train with lighter weights. This is exactly what you do. If you're coming back after a layoff, you haven't been in the gym in a while, don't think I'm going to make up for it. I'm going to go harder than last time. No, at this time, you go easier than last time. Take it easy. Use warm-up weights because if you don't, you're going to feel like you got hit by a truck and it's going to be very difficult to get motivated to go back to the gym. And so what I really like is he's sharing his journey with his son. They're training in the gym together, of course, using different weights, different equipment. But what they're going to do and what they do have in common is, of course, they're going to progressive overload. They're going to start easy and over the course of weeks, months, and or years, they're going to work out harder than last time. And so it's not how hard you start working out, but how much will you progress? And please enjoy the journey. It's not about the goal or the destination. It's all about the journey. Eddie's goal is to do a bodybuilding competition. His son, he's only 10 years old. He's got years ahead of him. I began training with my own father at the age of 10, just as Eddie Hall's doing right here. Great memories. And look at me today, 37 years later, I'm still training harder than last time. Not only the gym, also racing bikes. Look how hard it is to squat a normal bar. I'm used to having that seven foot one, the eight foot bar, sorry. Stretch out of it. And so one thing Eddie Hall's experiencing is his body is very tight. He's not as flexible. He's having a hard time getting full range of motion or even getting under the bar. And if that's a problem for you, what I highly recommend is to add stretching into your routine. And when should you stretch? Well, the best time is at the end of your workout. Well, I like static stretching where you get to a stretch when you feel it stretching and you hold it for perhaps 30 seconds to even a minute. It's important that he, things keep fun on this journey, he's got very severe ADHD. And the best cure for that is exercise. And what's really important when you're training, and it's not only applies to young people, also adults, but especially when you're young, is to make it fun. Children need to enjoy being active. If they hate it and they're not having fun, they will not do it when they get older. Think of it, reflect back to when you were a kid. Were there any sports or activities that you didn't like that you still do today? And if you don't like sports or you never had fun as a kid, what are the chances you're going to suddenly learn to like it as an adult? And so as a former phys ed teacher, remember, I taught for 11 years. The one thing I always tried to do was to make things fun. And so what you need to do is make a sport fun while teaching them the basics so that when they get older, they'll not only like it, but they'll also be good at it. If you're good at something and you like it, well, chances are that is a sport you're going to want to do for the rest of your life. Whereas when he trains, he's calm, he's collective, he's in bed for half past nine. And so being active not only helps you physically, but mentally as well. Not only that, socially and even spiritually. Perhaps you're stressed out, you have anxiety, ADHD, you name it. If you become physically active, it can in fact help you to feel better than last time. I've trained as a, a strongman slash powerlifter since I was 13, 14 years of age. And so he's trained as a strongman powerlifter for many years, is an expert on how to get stronger than last time. But what he's never done is trained simply for hypertrophy to build the aesthetics. And listen, Eddie, you can reach out to me at any time. You've written me in a DM. Go easy on me. Well, anything you want to know, please ask. I've coached people for decades. I've done 59 competitions. And I, like you, also did powerlifting. And so I know what it's like. I know what it's like to train for strength and transition to doing bodybuilding. Bodybuilding, it's not about gaining strength. It's about 
getting volume in the muscle. Exactly. Time under tension, tut. It's not all about lifting the heaviest weight and trying to get as strong as possible. It's about training with lighter weights safely so that you not only don't get injured, but you offer the muscle the best opportunity for muscle protein synthesis to occur. And if all you're doing is really heavy weights, never focusing on time under tension, you increase your risk of injury and you will not build as much muscle. One tip for anyone looking to bodybuild is leave your ego at the door. Try pausing the weights when you can and lower the weight under control. That will automatically create greater mind-muscle connection and ensure that you're increasing time under tension or tut. Always trying to tell me this time under tension. So lower the weight right down but just nice and slow. And so although he says he's clueless, he's already answering his own question. He already knows he needs to slow down the weight, increase tut, and that's gonna allow him to build more muscle. And we all know that creatine builds muscle, but he's speaking of that lactic acid burn. If you get that, beta alanine can help. Beta alanine showed in human studies to ward off that lactic acid burn and allow you to do more reps than last time. And so if you're doing high rep sets, increased time under tension, perhaps drop sets, super sets, and force reps, well, you don't want to go without beta alanine. I'm going to reach out to these coaches, reach out to these pals of mine, uh, and just, like I say, it's, it's exciting. And so Eddie said, by far, the diet's going to be the hardest thing. And although he doesn't cook, his wife cooks for him. He's going to get the freaking cookbook and she can prepare these meals. He says he loves cheesecake, chocolates, biscuits, pies, you name it. The guy loves to eat. And so with my freaking cookbook, it's going to make it easier than last time to stick to a diet. And so we're sending Heidi Hall the cookbook, both the hard copy PDF. Pretty soon, he'll be eating healthier, lower calorie, high protein meals than last time it's been that busy back on the game train Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's got the lingo down he's on the game train trying to build up more muscle than ever before and listen even though you're on the game train you do not need to bulk up in particular you don't need a dirty bulk and so consider this as many people don't understand when should i main gain when should i bulk when should i cut if it looks like you already bulked, don't keep bulking. And what do I mean by that? If your body fat is greater than 20% and most certainly above 25, bulking will be of no benefit to you. And in fact, it could make it worse. The more body fat you gain, the less healthy it is. It makes it harder to recover. When you're competing in bodybuilding, it's not like being a normal human being. You can't get away with having normal amounts of body fat. And so where I preach 15% body fat or perhaps 10 to 20% for most people, that is what you should maintain for the rest of your life. In bodybuilding, at some point, you're going to have to cut below 10%, closer to 4 or 5% if you're a pro, but likely 8% or less if you plan on doing good in a bodybuilding competition on stage. And in case you're wondering, there is absolutely no research evidence or anything at all to say that you shouldn't be lifting weights at this age. Many people thinking, oh, it's way too young. It's going to stunt your growth. No, it's not. Guys, 10 years of age. I started at 10. You're thinking, yeah, see, that's why you're manlet. I'm taller than my father, who's 5'5". Five, five. My mom was five feet tall. My twin's five foot three and a half, yet I lift the most weights. All right, no leg workout is complete without doing hamstrings. So get on this, Matt. All too often, people, they train the weights they can see in the mirror. Everyone sees their quads. Not many people can see their hamstrings. And so people, they often neglect that. Same happens to the back. More people will train the chest, the shoulders, the arms, because you can see it. The back, it's hard to see unless you have a two-way mirror. And so my advice, don't neglect any body part. Please highlight and focus on all of them. And so if I had to critique Eddie's leg extension, I would say take your own advice. Well, as you're lowering the weight here, you're dropping the weight very quickly. Perhaps this is good for strongman training, but in bodybuilding, you want to slowly lower the weight. And if you can do that, you'll have not only greater mind-muscle connection, but you'll also be increasing your time under tension. Of course you have to show your small... <laughs> I'm showing him your legs, not the well, that, What's that right there? Uh, uh. Problem with bodybuilding is in order to see the muscles, you have to strip it of all the extra body fat. And so I've stated in his previous video, he's close to 30% body fat. And so to me, he should focus on main gaining, perhaps keep his body fat percentage the same while slowly adding muscle or even go in a mini cut. He could go on a small calorie deficit, build muscle, lose fat at the same time, get leaner and get within striking distance of doing a bodybuilding competition. 
Perhaps maintain at 15 to 20% body fat. And then when it comes to dieting, perhaps 16 weeks out from the show, he can slowly lose the weight and come in at his all time best. So if you notice, I was doing like 10 to 12 reps, which is like a normal bodybuilding range. Strongman is usually a little bit less. While in actuality, many bodybuilders will do far greater than 12 reps. And so for myself, you'll often see me doing 15 or 20 reps on several of the exercises. I'm often doing partials, forced reps, drop sets, supersets, and so on. What you need to remember is you can build muscle in several different ways. You can use heavy weights, light weights, but what's of most importance is are you training hard, harder than last time? And this does not apply to beginners, but if you're an intermediate or advanced level lifter, you should be doing some of your sets near or at failure. Last thing then, Max, we've got biceps. It's Monday, so what biceps do we do? Curls. And so as I watch him do the curls, what I notice is he could have greater mind-muscle connection. And so what I'd like to see him do is on the eccentric part of the motion, the lengthening of the muscle, to do that slower. And on the way up, the concentric to turn the pinky up and supinate the bicep. Supinating or getting your pinky up will allow you to train the peak of your bicep that much more. Consider the bicep like this versus like that. As you supinate the hand, you can see the peak of the bicep getting more peak than last time. And when doing a bicep pose, raise the arms up. All too often, guys are doing bicep pose and the biceps are lower than their delts. Look how much more impressive it is when the biceps are higher than the delt. And so when doing a pose, make sure the bicep is higher than your delts. We had a lunch before we came here, so we've had a good hit of protein and carbs. We're about an hour and a half, hour and three quarters into the session. Your body's gonna start craving protein again. And so Eddie, he admits he doesn't understand this stuff. He's training for strongman and powerlifting. And so what he's done is he's consumed protein and carbs before the gym. And what does that mean? It means he does not need to have a protein shake during the gym. In any day, there are five opportunities for muscle protein synthesis to occur. That means to build muscle. And so if you're trying to optimize muscle hypertrophy or to build muscle, you should eat protein five times a day. It won't make a huge difference to only eat three or four four meals in comparison to five. But if you're trying to be the best Eddie Hall possible, five times a day. And so he easily could skip the protein shake taken during his workout and wait till he eats after. If you're eating every four hours, that is fine. You don't need to eat more often than this. Now, had he skipped the pre-workout meal, had he eaten nothing before the gym, and three quarters before the session had the protein shake, to me, that could be optimal. So you're always having that hit of protein several times throughout the day. This is why I was having a protein shake during the training session. And so unless you're in the gym training three or four hours straight, which you don't need to do, there's no reason that you should be trying to cram in a protein shake during your workout. But if you are, of course, Coach Greg's gonna plug it. We got brand new proteins. We got the hot chocolate and the white chocolate mint. I hate this one. I don't like mint. I gotta be honest. But if you like chocolate, highly recommend you get the hot chocolate. Taste better than freaking last time. And so as I watch them doing curls side by side, can't help but put a smile on my face. So happy they're here working out together. My only advice criticism would be, it's not a race, go slower. Think, how long can I do this exercise? And what I like to do is I like to time exercises and if possible, try to see if you can do them for 40 seconds. If you're getting 40 seconds of tut, that's a lot. If you're rushing through the exercises and you notice, wow, that only took me 15 or 20 seconds. Think to yourself, could I make this harder? Of course you can. Lift the weight slower, lighten the weights, do higher reps, try to go for 40 seconds. Are you always lifting heavy? Perhaps you're thinking, no, it's not heavy, I'm doing a set of 10. But if you're doing 10 reps in 15 seconds, your body doesn't know how many reps you did, it only knows how long did it have to work. What you're trying to do is increase the metabolic stress on the muscle, and in doing so, you're forcing the muscle to grow, and grow larger than last time. First session of 2023. It's not a good session, mate. Better than last time. And so that's exactly the attitude you should have. You look at your workout, how did you do? Did I train harder than last time? Yeah, it was better than last time. I trained harder. And if you didn't, that is okay. You cannot set a PR, have a better workout every single day. That is impossible for anyone. If you could, all of us would be the Mr. Olympia in a matter of years. But what you can do, what all of us can do, is try our best. And so if you end up having a bad workout, I'd say, oh, I wasn't there, wasn't feeling it today. That's okay. The next workout, you compare that workout to the previous one and say, did I do better this time? The answer is yes, you were successful. 
the workout after that, you can say, I'm going to try to go harder than last time again. If you are, congratulations. And if you didn't, that's okay. You tried. All you need to do is try. And the workout after that, compare yourself again. And so that is how you can train harder than last time for the rest of your life. People think, oh, Coach Greg, he doesn't make sense. You can't train harder than last time. That's impossible. Makes no sense. I just explained it. You try to train harder than last time. If you didn't, it's okay. You go to the gym and you do your best. It's harder than last time. It's the most simple, basic advice. But listen, it applies to everyone. Even Chris Bumstead, Big Rammy, all these guys can go to the gym, think, I'm going to train harder than last time. And if they did, congratulations if they didn't. We'll work on it next time. Got a long way to go. I know that. But I've got a great base. You know, 163 kilo. Body fat, probably probably 25, 20, 26% body fat. What have I always said? Most people, they underestimate their body fat by about 5%. And so he's probably 30%. And considering his body fat, as I described in his last video, he has a lot more weight to lose than he actually thinks. To compete in bodybuilding, it is not easy. You need to be absolutely shredded to win a bodybuilding competition. 26% body fat, which is quite average for most males in the UK. And so he says he has about an average amount of body fat, which is 100% true. For the most part, most people are in fact overweight and or obese. Being 15%, which to me is about an ideal body fat percentage for your health, most people have far more than that. I need to bulk up to say 175, 180 kilos, which is just shy of 400 pounds, about 390 pounds. And so does anyone think he really needs to bulk up to 180 kilograms or almost 400 pounds before dieting down for a bodybuilding competition? I say don't bulk up, main gain or slowly reduce body fat by being in a small calorie deficit and make your future diet that much easier. If you bulk up to 400 pounds, it's going to be a nightmare trying to get shredded. Even with all that muscle added, if he's close to 400 pounds, he's going to have to diet down to close to 300. And so imagine the challenge of having to drop close to 100 pounds of body fat for a bodybuilding competition. A 1,000 calorie daily deficit would result in two pounds of fat a week. And so to drop 100 pounds of fat, it would take close to a year. And that's with a 1,000 calorie deficit. And at first, it's easy. Go from 400 to 390, 380, 370. It's a piece of cake or quite literally just don't eat a piece of cake. But as you get leaner and your body's metabolism slows down and you have less energy, it's going to get hard. And if you're struggling with your diet, I strongly suggest you get my frigging cookbook. It's got over 100 recipes, low calorie dense foods, tons of protein for the big eaters. And so imagine you can eat all the delicious foods you want, just make them lower in calories, eat as much of it you want. You're going to be more full. You're going to eat less, easy to be in a deficit. Strongly suggest you get cookbook 2.0. Use code Greg. You'll get 10% off. Click the link in the description. I could probably go on stage and look good at 320, 330 pounds. Let's say. Does anyone think Eddie Hall can bulk to 400 pounds and then cut down in two or three months to 320 to 330 pounds and look good on stage? Chris Bumstead starts his diet as a specimen and diets for over three months. And so I just did the math. It would take close to a year for Eddie Hall to lose the weight without losing a lot of energy and suffering on the diet. Sure, he could speed it up. He could pick up the pace, perhaps do it in five or six months. But two to three to lose that much body fat, he'd have to be in a daily calorie deficit of about 3,500 calories a day. 3,500 daily deficit. That would allow him to lose one pound of fat a day. And so I would strongly discourage Eddie from trying to crash diet and lose all that weight in three months. It's simply not realistic. And if he does that, he'll lose a ton of muscle and feel like garbage. And following the diet, most likely he will regain all the weight and then some with a damaged metabolism. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment for the algorithm, like the video if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe. I need you as a subscriber. Do it right now. Just take a second, press the subscribe button. Watch the bloops and don't forget HGLT supplements, the cookbooks, the training books, the coaching plans by me and my team, the clothing line, all of it. Code Greg, 10% off. Click the link in the description. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Greg Doucette, IB Pro. And until next time, I'm out.